Table Daisy, and this is my very, very first candle prod. And I, excuse me, it's not. Then what is it? A a pod person like like peas in the a podcast. What's that? Oh, that that's the name of what I'm doing. Oh, I am so sorry. Um, well. Hi again, my name is still Mabel Daisy, and this is my very first podcast. Thank you, sweetie. And, um, welcome. So I thought maybe for the first, um, couple minute or so, um, I would introduce myself and maybe get to know some of you. Okay, let me see. My name is Mrs. Mabel Daisy Johansson. Um, I have about 12 children. And my favorite fish is a duck. All right, now moving on from introductions. So, um, I bet all of you are wondering why is she making this pod podcast? Thank you. And you know, I've been thinking. I was just—it's one of those things where you know, there are so many things that people do in private. So many things that they, especially that they think in private in their minds, that they go, no one else ever thinks this and no one else ever does this. It's like, you know, Googling pictures of cats and Photoshopping their faces on dogs or something like that. Or wondering why numbers are in that particular order. Like, no one ever talks about those kind of things. And it upsets me and I would like to be the first to reach out and say, we're going to talk about them anyway. Because I was told as a little girl that people didn't talk about the things I thought about. Like I'd think about something and I'd say it and someone would shut me down and say no one talked about that. Talked about, talked about, that. talked about that, talked about that. Thank you. And it was just so stressful as a young woman growing up. It was so, so annoying for your information. I was born and raised by, by my parents. And they were just so, I guess the phrase, oppressing or uplifting. I can't remember. But either way, you know, it's it was not helpful. So I've decided to dedicate my life and this um the this the YouTube to um help other people find their voice and express the things they want to talk about. Now, first of all, as I've said, I have been told that the things I think about are things no one else thinks about. But I think they're important. I think there are things that other people think are important just to know how to voice it. So this is me voicing my opinion and my feelings for all of you to hear. And hopefully, we can start an actual kind of discussion. So the way the um, the format of this um, of this Capella Prod is going to work is I am going to think of a topic from my head, or something I do in the privacy of my own room, and I'm going to write it down, and then I'm going to sit here in my little cozy carriage with my little can of butter and tuna, and I am going to talk about it with all of you. And you can write your little comments or whatever, and uh, this is probably going to be an annual thing, and by annual, I mean weekly. So, um... Yeah, it's going to be really exciting, I hope. I think it's going to be really good for me. My, um, I've been told that talking things out is much better than bottling them up. Which is, I think that's why, you know, I think that's why Coke fizzes when you open it. Because the release and all of it. See, that's another thing we can talk about, but that's not the topic for today. Okay, so. <clears throat> so, I decided to pick something that I think is really important. Something that I think scientists needs to even need to talk about themselves. I think this is something that is a vital importance to discuss and wonder about. Because, you know, I'm taking a walk and I look up and I go, that's something very curious. We should all be discussing this together as one, as a society. This would be something that we should be learning about and studying. I'm really curious. So, oh, and also, I'm going to give my own input to the answers. Because, you know, that's the only way to really talk about something is if you assume otherwise. So, um, to start off this little, um, pod of ours, of mine, well, I'm sharing it with you, so it's ours. <laughs> that's cute. That's so cute. Um, I have a very, very important question. Now, if anyone has the actual answer to this, or my answer turns out to be correct, I would like to know. That would mean a lot to me. 
especially if he was correct, because so I can um, report it to Obama and all those um, really important people in the in the White House. Okay, so what I want to talk about, which I think is very important, and we should all be stressing over. I mean, not stressing, but being curious about every so often taking a walk and go, what's that? Oh my gosh. But the question, the question is why, bear with me, why street signs are green? Ever thought about that? Now, no, seriously though, I think about it. Have you ever seen a street sign, street sign that is not green? I mean, at least in, you know, this half of America. I'll take that as a no. So, because I've never seen a street sign, street sign that wasn't green. And I want to know why. What is up with this? So, that's why I'm asking you. Alright, so here's what I'll come up with. Now, this is what I got. Okay, so, the sun creates chlorophyll that fills up the leaves in the trees and it makes them green. Now, what I figure is there must be some kind of reflective surface off of the street signs that absorbs the color of chlorophyll or has the same making of a leaf and it consumes that and becomes the color of the leaf. It becomes green. And the letters must have some sort of white coating or maybe, maybe, hmm, they have some sort of white coating on them so we can still read the sign. But like at the same time, in, um, you know, your autumn and your winter when there aren't leaves, unless it's a pine tree, um, they don't, the street signs don't turn, um, don't turn yellow and red. Stop signs are red, which is a totally other discussion to have. But, I mean, the street signs don't turn color. So maybe, maybe, what if the street signs were made in Mexico? And because there's a lot of sun in Mexico, there's more sun there than we get here in the sites. Maybe um, it hits the leaves and it hits the sign. And then... They make a special code in that's white so other white people can see it in the States. And that's, oh my gosh, and that's why black people get lost. And that's why they get pulled over in residential areas because they can't read the signs. It makes sense. That's why police officers are saying black people can't read. That makes so much sense. Oh my gosh, I just thought racism. Wow, that was intense. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I hope this is something that you will be talking about. Um, <clears throat> I hope that all of you have wonderful days, nights, and dinners. And, um, this will hopefully be a continuing thing. Uh, if you have any questions you would like me to discuss or anything that you think about on your own time, just let me know and I'll consider, uh, thinking about talking about it. And, um, yes, thank you for tuning in and, um, <laughs> paying attention to me. <laughs> and, um, I will see you later. Okay? All right. So, I'm Mabel Daisy, and I will see you all next time on my Kayla Prod.